And so then whether it's this particular sin or any kind of sin, what you're talking about now on repentance, that's any kind of sin that we commit that we have to deal with because there's, there's yes, forgiveness and all that, but regardless of the sin, there's always consequence. Hey, welcome to the Rethink Podcast. The You're skipping the banter, huh? Banterless podcast. Right to the action. <laughs> I was going to say, if we were going to start with the the banner episode, this is how I would have gone. Right. We're straight into it. Content. Quiet. Bible only. I do think, though, before you before you get into the the text, you should tell the audience about the drywallers. They're good. <laughs> they are flying. You're, you're leaving it like that. You're not telling the story. I'm not telling the story. Right. Man, I wasn't here. I want to know. I'm trying to bait him on it. No, 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 no. I told the drywallers we didn't have water one day. We had a three inch oh, line. A three inch really sewer good. line. Well, we had just another issue. We had we had a water line and a sewer line problem. Anyway, didn't we didn't have water for a day. We <laughs> thought so. I told the drywallers they could use baptismal water. <laughs> And he said the drywall bill will be very good. <laughs> uh, There's more details to the story, but I'm afraid it'll get caught on the internet. It will. <laughs> so so does that mean we need to fill it. up the baptistry again? No, I filled it up last night. Oh, okay. Good. I also I drained it and cleaned it. Oh, you oh. did? Because they did use it, and they had mud in it. <laughs> I cleaned the top of it because it had mud on it last night. <laughs> yeah. I had two baptisms since then. We have and two tomorrow night. There's two tomorrow night? Yeah, my nephews. Oh, nice. We're going to have oh, nice. well over 100 yep. baptisms this year. Speaking of that, I need to send you videos, it's Stephen. Amazing. It's amazing. Forgot. God is really doing things. It's pretty neat. That's Yeah, that's cool. Five this week. And there's one, one or two Sunday. You know you sit so close to the microphone that all we see is the black fuzzy. Yeah, it's because, I don't and, know if you and watch, your forehead. You watch podcasts or not, but this is how people are supposed to do it. <laughs> Maybe he was gone that yeah. week when Stefan told us to <laughs> sit people, into the People mic. are supposed to talk into it. That's why there's there's these things. Uh, I don't know what they are. Jordan bought them. But they're they're for getting close. Stefan told me to stay away from the mic. Well, I guess because you're, you're loud. loud. It's like, put it over there. Oh. Why Kelly asked you to... There we go. Hey, we're bantering. We're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Matthew 5. I thought you were in Matthew 6. That's Five, why you're not seven. preaching this week. That's next week. You're not oh, preaching for a I'm month. A, I'm a week ahead. I'm skipping the first four. You verses. don't even know what text we're in? Uh, I do now. <laughs> Matthew 5. 20. Actually, 21 through 48. Well, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> On paper, it's it's 21. But 21 through 48 is a series of illustrations. Six. Ooh, oh, sorry. Six illustrations of verse 20. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to back up Sunday to get a little introduction. You know, I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. People would have been shocked. The common people of Capernaum, uh, there on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, on the mountain of the sermon, would have been shocked. To hear that, because who's going to be who's going to be able to do that, right? The Pharisees Nobody. and teachers of the law would have been angry, would have been ticked, mm -hmm. right? Who's going to be able to do that? Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and the f early followers of Christ are going. Whoa, did we sign up for that? <laughs> I mean, this is this is a tough way to start your your new kingdom. Let's exclude everybody because you can't get in. And it goes all the way down to verse forty-eight, as if it's not enough to up the ante to be more righteous than the, than the teachers of the law than Pharisees. you got to be perfect. Like God is perfect. Checking out. Like I ain't going to make it. Why start something you can't finish? <laughs> There's the temptation to get in some banter that I'm going to ignore. <laughs> that's the, that's the, like, this section highlights, I don't know, like maybe more than any, that you can't live this. I mean, it's a very hard to live this way. I think that's the whole point. It is. I, I really believe that's true. Because God's concern is not so much for external righteousness. 
I mean, what's the external righteousness without a heart transformation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where a lot of us are, because it's easy to measure the externals, right? We work on changing the externals, because other people can see those, too. But God is ultimately, I mean, it goes back to one of my favorite stories, the selection of King David, uh, household of Jesse, eight sons, first seven come to the banquet, because Samuel says, I'm going to pick a new king from your boys. None of them chosen by God. Do you have any more? Well, yeah, there is Dave. And Dave's out with the sheep. Yeah. Why, why is Dave out with the sheep? Because ain't no way he's going to be king, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? But what is it, what is what happened there? Samuel relays that God looks at people differently than than we look at people. We look at the outside yeah. appearance. God looks at the heart. And so Jesus is, this is nothing new. Sermon on the Mount is nothing new. This isn't new information, new ideology. It's explanation of what really God's been seeking all along. I want you to be my people. I created you to have a relationship with me. And we have heart problems. So thanks for joining us on the Rethink Podcast. <laughs> no banter today. <laughs> so I think you, the, uh, uh, go ahead. No, I, no, say, go I ahead. think you, the, the hardness of heart is key to this because over and over again jesus is always talking about how you know the people that he is you know the pharisees teachers of law even just the nation of israel it's because they are living in hardness of heart and stubbornness and rebellion against god that they aren't understanding what he came to do and who he is and so even the sermon on the mount like he's picking topics to talk about because it's confronting their hardness, the ways that, you know, they're not seeing what God truly desires in their, in their nation, in their country. So, so basically what has happened and this whole section is, is the, if you haven't read this five, uh, 21 through 48, different illustrations where Jesus says, you have heard it said, mm-hmm. let me say and that alone is a whole sermon. Oh, yeah. what is he communicating there? Right. He doesn't say it is written. Let me written would have been to connotate the law of Moses. Right. Things that came from from the father to Moses and (laughs) transferred to the people. So he doesn't say it is written. He says you have heard, which is to say, where did they hear it from? Oral tradition. Right. The Pharisees, teachers of the law, the Sadducees, they came up with ways that people need to live in order to fulfill the law that was written Mm -hmm. problem is the what you have heard sometimes is more in your face than what is written um you couldn't follow either one honestly but so you have heard and the people who are saying that you have heard are in the audience and so from the early days on they're after him um you know so that that's where this all starts But let me say, Jesus is saying, I am the authority. That's a big deal, too. He's not claiming the the, the right to communicate these things because he's a part of this grouping or that. No, here's here's what you do. He's making a deity claim right there. Mm -hmm. I'm the law writer. It's, It's big stuff. I guess when I, when I look at that, and and this is probably a question for that, because like on the first two, the first two that he mentioned, so in verse twenty one and verse twenty seven, where he says, "You'd heard me say that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder." So like my my brain immediately goes back here to Exodus twenty one to the Ten Commandments, correct? Do not murder, and then in um, twenty seven, you have heard it said, "Do not commit adultery." Mm-hmm. Again, that's exactly where my brain goes back to right. to the the Ten Commandments that God gave him. And, and in that point, what I, what I, what trans, I don't even know how to verbalize this. The, the way it works in back then, God was saying, these are, these are the way to live. So do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do this. And so they took it literal, which they should. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, and then what I'm reading Christ here, what I'm reading Jesus say, yeah, I don't want you to murder, but you know what? I want your whole heart. I want your whole life. So it's one thing not to go commit this physical act of murder, but to get angry with your brother or to get angry with your friend and retaliate in this way. It's like just the fact that that anger is in your heart or don't go commit adul- adultery. But yet if you're going to lust over, over someone in this way in your heart. And so 
I think in the whole thing, what I look at is Christ is asking us to submit 100% everything that we have, heart, mind, soul, everything to him, and not just for, you know, give me the Sabbath, keep it holy, not just for that one day, but for every day. You ever get a speeding ticket? Yes. Levi, you ever had a speeding ticket? I, yes, I have. Really? That mm-hmm. actually surprised me too. Me too. <laughs> I didn't figure you speed. <laughs> you can think that. Tell me, tell me the story. Uh, I was driving between my parents' house and Duh. Leah's parents' house. <laughs> I was walking <laughs> <laughs> out for a walk <laughs> and driven that road. You know, a lot of times visiting Leah when we were dating and. I was not uh, thinking and just zoned involved. out. Were you headed to see her or, or on your way back? Uh, no, I was heading His to heart was see out her. Yeah. Yeah. He was, that makes he sense. Was he was to trying to get there Not even thinking. Get there fast. All of yeah. a sudden met the cop. He just whips right around, turns his lights and on. And you got and to really meet him. I did, yeah. How fast were you going? I, not that bad. Oh, okay. You know, Throw a number out of I think like 65. I don't think, I, think I was going over 70. Country road? Yeah. Well, Dietrich Blacktop. Oh, I thought that's the Audubon. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I don't there's never say, police cars between Dietrich there's and There's never Bible a car Hill there. Road. Does that make a difference? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you ever heard somebody hold the principal? It's not it's not wrong unless you get caught. I had a guy say that to me last night. <laughs> it's not wrong unless they catch you. Only you ever going... had a speeding ticket, Caleb? <laughs> yes. Multiples. Multiples. Too many to talk about. <laughs> okay, moving on. Matt? <laughs> One. Really? Okay, so what's the story? So I was, we were living in Salem right after we got married, and we drove over to Belleville uh, for the day to, like, O'Fallon, Illinois, and we were on our way back, and I was going 74, 75, and a 55, and Megan was in the car. That's pretty significant. Yeah, got, got pulled over. It. So that was the only time I've been caught. But I have sped before. I got caught coming north out of Toledo, mm. heading up toward, you know, there's a road, the highway that goes north out of Toledo. Mm-hmm. The Burma. To Burma? What? The Burma. The Burma. Yeah. I got caught, supposedly, I don't think it's correct. He, The, the guy Truth's was sitting out. on the edge of town in the acceleration zone. And I hit 34 right before the sign was present <laughs> to change it to 55 of the highway speed i got a ticket for doing 34 now not that i've not been guilty before but that's ridiculous nine did miles. you have an attitude problem with that what was the intention I mean, of your you heart kinda, at that you point i yeah. feel like you have one well, right not, not, <laughs> not in the face-to-face moment i was just kind of shocked. I, I said was i even speeding because I, I i didn't even know i was speeding how I did was you, accelerating. How did, how did you say that, though? Uh, what what'd you pull me over for? Because, <laughs> you know, they'll always... Did you tell them you're a preacher? They like to ask, do you know why I pulled you over? No, why'd you pull me over? I don't know why you pulled me over. I wasn't going fast. Yep, that's what got it for you. I don't know why the heck I'm here. Arrogance. <laughs> Pride. You can't roll through stop signs in Toledo, either. They'll get you for that. So, I, I, How many times have you been pulled over? <laughs> I was going to a guy's house there. And he said, oh, I told him I got a ticket. And he said, I know where you got it at. He said, they sat there to catch people speeding up too quick. Now, my point is. <laughs> Speed trap. My point is, and this relates to the text. I see where you're going now. Yeah, mm. that's ridiculous. <laughs> the spirit of the law is to be safe. Right? And I was in the acceleration zone. I thought. I was. No, I Is know. there a such thing? Should be. <laughs> The spirit of the law is to keep you safe. The letter of the law says, I guess, until you hit the sign. I don't know. Is it the front of your car or your, your rear bumper? <laughs> right? Does your rear bumper have to pass the sign of 55 before you can hit 55? 34. Come on. So the, the spirit of the law and the letter of the law are different things. I like that I illustration. I do too. What's the spirit of the law? I think, I think Jesus is saying, you guys have totally missed the spirit of the law. Because they could, they could yeah. at least with these first two, they can say, "I, I didn't do that." There would have been, there would have been, I think people going, "Well, yeah, I've not murdered. 
Correct. I thought about it, but I'm not. I have not committed <laughs> adultery. Right. But. It's the parable of the rich, the rich young ruler. The same thing. Like, he followed the law, but where yeah. was. Where, where was the, so the spirit, the spirit of yeah. the law is what? God wants it. Well, the first one, honor and respect the life. It flows out of the, the nature of God himself. Yeah. Right? A reverence for life. And so, okay, so you didn't kill someone. Do you disrespect life? Do you do you wish you could kill them? <laughs> you just don't want to face yeah. the consequences? Yeah. Right? The second one, it, the, the reverence for marriage. You know, I, I think Jesus, and it comes back up in another one here later, I think Jesus is elevating, this is what God created marriage to be. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one thing, you know, to come in adultery. That's a whole other story that was directly forbidden. But Why? because he wants us to revere the relationship and two becoming one. And so lust in the heart, Jesus says, let me, let me tell you the spirit of the law is to protect the wholeness of the relationship. And I, I think that, I think that cop in Toledo was wrong, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Right. Cause I got to take it anyway. And I paid it. Does that make sense though? That's what Jesus is doing here. It's not just the it's not just the law. It's the spirit of the law, mm-hmm. which I feel like when you investigate these flow out of the character and nature of God Himself. Oaths, yeah. you know. You talk about the next one. Well, God keeps His word. When He says something, that's what will be. It is written. He will do it. We don't have to add to that. God says, and it's that's the way it's going to be. Um, so you you know you need to follow that your word needs to be your word. God is just an eye for an eye. Well, you know God is just. It's going to be what God says. And if there's a consequence, you eat the fruit, you'll die. What happens when you eat the fruit, Adam? You die. Mm-hmm. Right. So it always flow out of the character and, and nature of God. He, do you love your enemies? God doesn't desire to punish anyone. I think that's fair, yeah. right? He wants a per, he wants a reconciled relationship with us, and that's what he desires for us to to desire for people. So, any more comments? Can we go to the one that's hard? Yeah, let's do it. Oh boy! I was cram studying. Hmm. You were? I was. Just now? Yeah. Like while we were recording? No, like before oh. we came on recording. It was like, you know, here's the one that last 30 minutes before a test, you're trying to get everything in. I start 30 minutes before a test. Well, I can tell you on this one, sometimes the more you study, the more complicated it gets. Um, when I we can were... almost feel this one in the, when we read this in the room. I yeah, can almost what, feel yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Because when it came out and, and here, it was Mariah that read it. Kelly read it in mm-hmm. Clay County. I was like, oh, I forgot that's in there. Ooh, how do we get around that? What's the spirit of that? I actually looked after she read it the first service, and I was like, oh, man, Jeff's preaching on that weekend. Awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is, man, it's it's pretty well, It's heavy. emotional. Let's, let me read it, and then we'll, yeah, you know, okay. This is This one really hits, it hits um, in your heart, <laughs> if, if you've walked this journey. And we all we all know someone or love someone that has, right? right? Um for lots of reasons. It has been said anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you, anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. <clears throat> that last sentence is tough. I, I think we... I mean, the other ones, the other ones are pretty easy to address. I think right? they're pretty cut and dry. I think uh, one of the things that you said it's been a long time. We were going through Revelation, but you said that this text can't mean for us what it didn't mean for them, meaning that you have to understand the context of what's happening culturally. And you explained that to me the other day in the kitchen. So why don't you start there with what was happening in that? In so the culture. text can't mean what it didn't mean to them. Right. That's where we got to go first. You can't you can't look at this text as a standalone teaching on marriage and divorce, right? 
you got to look at it in the context of everything that's taught in Scripture. So what's Jesus doing here? Well, we go back to the first thing he said, it has been said, right? It has been said. Well, who's saying? The Pharisees, the teachings uh, of the day about marriage and divorce. And it goes back to um, Deuteronomy 24.1, right? You've got to give a certificate of divorce if you're going to get a divorce. There's two... Uh, in the day of Jesus, now, there are two primary schools of, of thought from the rabbis. And I don't remember. Halaliel and Sh- what's the other guy? Halaliel? Shammai or something Shammai. like that? Cram studied. 30 got minutes it. and you already got that far. <laughs> That's amazing. Shammai and Halaliel. <laughs> He's crazy. Gifted. They are the two primary schools of, of thought here. And I'm Shammai. Something like that. Yeah. It is the, uh, let's say, lenient school? I think it's the other way, hmm. but Hello. I don't know. He I'll, just I'll have that down by Sunday for the sermon. <laughs> the It takes me a lot longer than 30 minutes, though. One of them is very lenient. One of them is very strict, right? One says that the certificate of divorce only comes... The, the, the allowance is in cases of sexual immorality. Paul is going to expand that in the New Testament to talk about abandonment and potentially include that as a part of the cases. And some people would say abuse. But anyway, those are, I mean, if that didn't happen in the relationship, you can't divorce, right? That's the one school. The other school, which was the primary one that people were living under at that time, said that as long as he gave a certificate, they jumped on that element of That's the, fine. the you know, Moses says, okay, if the marriage doesn't work, you got to give a certificate. And so the marriage doesn't work, why? They expanded it beyond sexual immorality or abuse and abandonment to say, if she burns supper and you're tired of it, if you, you know, you thought she could cook and she can't, <laughs> if she, if you found one that looked better. Sounds like 2023. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um... Go ahead. Divorce is okay as long as you give a certificate, right? Don't have to have much biblical justification for it. Just give her a certificate. If you gave her a certificate, it's all good. And Jesus is basically saying to them, that's wrong. It degrades the God-intended nature of marriage, one man, one woman for a lifetime. And he says, basically... This means if you, I don't care if you gave her a certificate or not. If, if you got rid of her because you burnt supper, you're still married to her. Now, we've got to understand that this is also tied to culturally property laws and um, the responsibility that a man took to care for his family, to provide for his family. You may have noticed other times in scripture things like, so if a man dies, his brother is responsible for taking care of his, the man's wife. Right and so on and so on. Why? Why is that? Well, there's no social security system. There's no insurance policy in place. We don't have life insurance. And so, how is she? How is she going to survive in this world? God puts in place a plan so that she's taken care of. So you divorce her, give her a certificate. How's she going to be taken care of? Right. So he said, you, "She's still your responsibility." So if she goes and some other man now takes her as his wife and he's going to take care of her, that's adultery because you're not really, in the eyes of God, you're not divorced because you didn't have a legit reason. You just had a moody day. (laughs) Or you got caught up in lust and found somebody else. That's where the story's at. So the certificate that they were giving, who cares? God says marriage is a man and a woman committed to each other for a lifetime. Um, Don't commit adultery. That's the early one. Don't lust. That prevents a lot of this. (laughs) Right. And honor each other with your with your vows that you're making. Would you say the spirit of the law in this issue is the men in this situation were not valuing their spouse, um, and so like they were women were property. Yeah. Women were property. And that's a beautiful thing about Jesus. Jesus is elevating the, the woman in this relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, she's not your property. She's a special design creation of God that he's blessed you with to be a partner. And they're treating her like property. 
So he, not only is he elevating marriage, he's elevating women. Mm -hmm. yep. And I think that's a huge positive in this story. Now, having said all of that, here's where I wrestle with. We make mistakes, right? We get caught in culture. What do we do about that? Um, what is, how, how does repentance play in this story? You know, because the church in some areas has held divorce as, I don't say unforgivable, but you can maybe be forgiven before God, but you're going to have to deal with the consequences of that for the rest of your life. You can't, you can't be whatever. You can't serve as an elder. You can't, you end up divorced. You're off staff in some places. How, how do we deal with that in regards to repentance and restoration and what, what's the intent, the heart of this instruction? I'll ask the question. You can talk about that. I, I don't know exactly the answer, but I like how Jesus flows this. And so like right there in divorce, so that's 31 through 32. He's talking about that. And then he immediately goes into oaths. your oaths. And so it's almost a double whammy for those guys who were just because they wanted a new model or they wanted a better cook or they wanted, you know, wasn't any of those inline reasons that he's going, hey, remember that oath. And again, to me, that also goes back to like that covenant God was making. He made a covenant with us. And now when I view marriage, we go into that same form of covenant with that. And so when he, how he flows that into there, hmm. and so then whether it's this particular sin or any kind of sin, what you're talking about now on repentance, that's any kind of sin that we commit that we have to deal with because there's there's yes forgiveness and all that, but regardless of the sin, there's always consequence. And so that's whether we're talking about this or we're talking about murder or lying or speeding, whatever, breaking man's laws, you're still gonna have a consequence that sin. Even your your story of the ticket, you still had a consequence, whether you thought it was wrong or not. Well, let's be clear about it, it wasn't wrong. <laughs> there was still a consequence and you still had to pay a monetary, a monetary fee. Yeah. In that case, and same thing, whether it's this or. Well, I mean, well, what we do culturally, and we do a really good job of this in the church world, <laughs> particularly, is we we tend to put sins on a scale, mm -hmm. and say, you know, these are th these sins are near the unforgivable unforgivable side. Well, that's not what that's not what Jesus does. Right. You know? Yeah. So in our divine relationship, there isn't a scale, but in, in earthly consequence, there is. Right. Like murder is. Yeah. There's a strong consequence there. Yeah. Right. So some sins on in the temporal, temporary consequences is greater. I find this interesting though. You know, the book of Hosea mm. is is an illustration there of um, the relationship God has with us, and what does He do with that story? He has Hosea the prophet, he instructs him to marry a prostitute, mm -hmm. right? And she Take keeps her stepping wife. out. And yep. she steps out, and what does he say to him? Go after her. Go forgive her and restore the, yeah. the relationship. And so, and I know that's about, that's a picture for Israel and God and their relationship, but it's it's also a, it's a descriptive picture of God. No matter the mistake, Ultimately, he, he forgives mm -hmm. and wants to restore relationship, but we still have consequences. Yeah. And the thing that I, I really hate to see is any person who almost feels like, in a sense, they're, they're on an island. You know, like they, they I, I've heard this story so many times. I, I can't come to church because um, I, I'm divorced and everybody in the community knows it and they don't accept me. Or, or they think they're second-class Christians. Right. Yep. And, man, that's not what God wants. Like, he does not I, want you to feel that way. I had somebody way. say to me that they wanted to, they were, they were repenting, really were wanting to change, uh, and had made mistakes in life, and, and wanted to change that pattern. And she said, I'm, I want to be as pure as I possibly can. And I said, oh, that's... That's where you've got to understand with God. Like when he forgives, you're pure. 
It's not like as close to pure, yeah. but you made mistakes pure. No. It's like forgiven pure. Yeah. It's gone. East set from free. the West. It's set right. free. And, you know, and so we don't have the answer. I don't have the answer to the what's the, what's the temporal consequences of this, you know, in, in, in life. I, I feel like um, repentance and the heart and, and, you know, and restoration is all part of the relationship with God. And uh, we make mistakes, right? Sometimes big ones. Sometimes and, big mistakes. Right. And what really hurts to watch is when a person knows the standard that yeah. God set, but still chooses to follow their own desires. And knows the consequences. And knows the consequences. Still, yep. And still steps out. Because what, I've, what I don't want to see, and it happens a lot, is... Like, for whatever reason, that relationship that you saw is more valuable than the relationship you had with God. When that eventually breaks up, it's like they're, 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 they jump back in, but there's really no genuine repentance. Like, there's no, hey, I've done, I'm, I'm wrong. And if you're, if you're there at that spot, like, God, I'm wrong, I've done some things I shouldn't have done, then there is freedom. But if it's not genuine, you're still in captivity. I don't know if that makes sense, but... You know, I think we've got to view sin. Sin is adultery mm -hmm. in yeah. our relationship with God. Right? And so is there is there a reason for him to divorce us? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. when we say, I know I shouldn't do this, but here I go. Yeah. It's adultery in our relationship with him. And so unless there's a, a heart change, we're separated mm -hmm. from him. Yeah, that's a tough one. The other side of this, too, is, you know, like you, if you're a, a lady that's been through a, a season like this, sometimes um, your ability to see God seems to be connected through that lens of the relationship you were your past relationship with that that man and sometimes that can keep people from experiencing the life that God wants for them you know has for them so I've obviously never been in that situation <laughs> but I guess you know just the constant reminder of the fact that he is perfect and that he genuinely loves you and cares about you and he what he says he will do you know I've just seen people who divorce is a big deal I mean it, it hurts you know whether there's whether there is biblical reason or not. The consequences of that, I, I had one person affirm for me this truth that it would have just been easier if they would have died hmm. than to get go through a divorce, because their the reminder of the life situation is present, and they were sharing custody, uh, and the pain of that, you know, and the the perpetual reminder that this isn't the way this was supposed to go. And, and I, I guess for those people, there's, I don't want that last phrase to be a, a billy club for them either. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, you, you, at some point, I think, I think God says, I love you. You're, you know, in my eyes, you're pure. There are still consequences sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, still consequences sometimes. You know, murder. There was a consequence for that. Yeah. And and you're not going to get out of prison. And that in that culture, you you still die. You can be forgiven, <laughs> but you're still going to die. Um, it's tough stuff. Well, going back to tie it all in, and if you look at that last verse that you already quoted, that none of us can achieve. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So, what is the whole point of all this? The whole point of all this is I read it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like it's surrendering of self. And all of these things, it's because, well, I don't like this person, so I'm going to murder. Or I I see something that I want, so I'm going to go lust for that, or I'm going to go obtain that. Or I'm tired of this, so I'm going to go find something else. Or, yeah, I said I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to go there. But it's all about I. Hmm. like, And that's what Jesus brought up. But, but the whole point of this is to be perfect, you have to surrender yourself to God. Because there's only one thing, one person that can make you 
perfect that like what you said that can make you pure again that can cover you and that is the gift of life through Jesus and through his sacrifice through his love through his death his burial his resurrection and but we have to come to that point of giving up myself so that's a good tie Caleb be perfect as I what is he saying there be perfect as, as God is perfect this is an unattainable standard mm -hmm. so let, let's go back to where we started, verse 17. Your righteousness has surpassed mm -hmm. that of the Pharisees and teachers of the law. Uh, that ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Can't be perfect. Here's all these examples. You, you've heard it said, but I'm telling you. You've heard it said, but I'm telling you. You've heard it said, but I'm telling you. So in this kingdom that Jesus is really focusing on building, the new covenant built based upon his But Remember, that hasn't happened yet. These folks are still bound to live according to the law he hasn't offered himself as a sacrifice that's three and a half years from now you can't do it nobody can so you've heard it said what were the here's the way to be righteous that's what you've heard i'm here to tell you it cannot be done you could follow all this stuff that you've heard that it was mm -hmm. said doesn't matter you can't do it because ultimately the goal is to be perfect like the Father is perfect, and we all fall short. Yep. Right, and so these are not used to be um, singling out to you know to separate people or say, "Oh, I've attained that." That's the whole point. No, you haven't. Mm -hmm. You can't. Mm -hmm. What 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 person hasn't been caught up in lust? What person hasn't been angry? What person hasn't made a mistake and broken a vow, or a relationship gone bad? You know, I mean, maybe not every one of these things. Who who really loves the, all their enemies? <laughs> you know, who doesn't want vengeance? Yeah. So we cannot obtain the standard. That's what Jesus is saying. This is the kingdom. Here's the parameters of getting in. Yep. You can't. Yeah. You're going to need help. Again, and using scripture to show us that we fall short and that we need a savior. Right. Mm -hmm. It's all introduction of the coming of the Messiah. Yep. Well, I hope if you listen to this, you listen to all of it, right? Not just take a sentence or a thought along the way. This is a, this is one of those moments where context matters. Context of conversation matters and context of uh, what Jesus is saying matters. So thank you for taking the time to listen to the Rethink Podcast.